And I don't know if, I think we are just live and there's maybe a recording button. We are live. Excellent. Welcome everyone. I hope you're enjoying Phosphor G. I don't know if, I think we are just live and there's maybe a recording button. Oh no, I have to mute this thing. Excellent. What? Okay, that works. There's a little bit of a delay between the two systems. So I would like to introduce Paul and Joe, who are here to talk us about geo network and search engine optimization. Take it away, you two, and thanks so much for presenting. Hi, Paul, do you want to kick off? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, so welcome, everybody. Hello, Buenos Aires. Um, so, so this is me and Joe uh, presenting uh, a presentation around search engine, uh, search engine optimization in in the catalog world. So, Joe is uh, Aston Technology in the UK, and uh, I'm Paul van Genuchter currently at the uh, Israel World Soil Information in Wageningen, the Netherlands. So uh, Joe is a data discovery lead at, at Aston, and uh, she's also, uh, like me, a GeoNetwork PSC member. PSC stands for a Project Steering Committee. So we make like kind of choices what the roadmap of the GeoNetwork project uh, is. Uh, she's also a UK Gemini uh, Steering Group member. That's the uh, UK uh, national profile for metadata. And she created the Gemini profile uh, for GeoNetwork. And then she manages a couple of catalogs for various uh, groups in the UK. I'm uh, these days at World Soil uh, Information, which is a, a global institute a foundation uh, to uh, um, increase the accessibility to, to soil uh, data in general. So one of the products that we have is a global soil map based on various uh, sources from, from over the world. Um, my specialization is data discovery, sharing, and standardization. Joe, your slide. Hi. Yeah. So um, we're going to go back to the them back into the mists of time um, when people first started creating data and thinking that they needed to describe it, and um, yeah, basically people really didn't worry too much about metadata because they were the only people that were going to be, be using the data sets. Um, they didn't really expect them to be seen by, by anyone else. Next slide, please. So things have changed. Um, you know, now it's all about, you know, sharing your data sets. So your little data set might get shared on the corporate internet or it might get shared in a public catalog. Um, it might get shared in a national catalogue like data.gov.uk here in the UK. Um, and the, the big change is that uh, it, it's extremely likely that your data set might be made accessible to the general public via search engines. Um, this is a really good thing, but all of these, all of these steps add um, complexities and challenges. Next slide, please. So with online access comes great responsibility. Um, you're making your data set available. And um, you know, you know the, the first question is, should it, should it be made available online at all? Um, and then for the people that, that kind of want to, uh, want to, to use this data, is it clear who published it? Is it clear when it was last updated? You know, how current is it? Um, are there any usage constraints, um, you know, uh, or, or licenses? And, and can people actually figure out whether the data is suitable for what they, you know, what they want it for? Um, and then there's also the, the feedback loop. So do, do, are people actually using the data? So as the data creator, um, you want to know whether whether it's useful, whether people are actually making use of it, um, and 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 kind of from a strategic level, is it worth spending the time and the money making it uh, making it accessible? Next slide, please. 
So um, we've got kind of proof that this is what's happening. So in 2019, the Geospatial Commission in the UK did some research which said that um, the vast majority of, of visitors to uh, the, the largest geospatial portals in the UK came from search engine traffic rather than direct visits to the portal. So 75% of people, roughly speaking, were coming directly from search engines. Um, so, so basically the managers of these portals, if they, if they really want the data sets to be found, then, then they, need to, they need to address this, this and they need to do search engine optimization to, uh, to, to make sure that the data is, is findable. Next slide, please. So the Geospatial Commission came up with some best practice guidance for data publishers. Um, you know, basically things you can do to your catalog and to your metadata um, to, to make them easier to find. Um, so this is sort of recommendations for, uh, for optimizing the actual um, records themselves. Um, and then also the use of, of analytics to to um, improve, you know, the, the 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 ranking. So, trying to get your metadata records to to um, to kind of rank highly in in search results. Next slide, please. So, um, so what are the the basic principles of uh, of of SEO? Um, for this bit, I'm going to hand over to Paul to, to talk to you. Yes, thank you, Joe. Um, so um, SEO, it's, it's, uh, if you go to Google and you type a search term, then you arrive at a, at a web page, uh, HTML. So, so uh, this is an important aspect of SEO that each uh, a, uh, piece of content that you have on your website has a unique URL uh, to go to. Um, and then you, additionally, you can use header content negotiation um, uh, of it, the, the, the content that is on the page should be relevant to the, to the URL. And uh, if you create links between pages, the, the, the search engine may have, uh, use that as an algorithm to increase the ranking of the page. Um, in order to have a very fast ingestion of your, or your of your content, you can feed the the search engine with a sitemap, with links to all the record pages. So it can incidentally, uh, or no, it can at that moment link to uh, harvest the full website, and uh, that's why you register it at the search console. the The behavior of the search engine is a bit of a black box to all of us. Uh, it usually takes uh, weeks up to months uh, for the full content to be registered. But uh, uh, having a sitemap uh, uh, at least uh, increases it. So this is also my recommendation. Use tools as much as possible to, to evaluate the linkage, uh, to uh, evaluate at the various uh, search engines. Uh, there is for the, for the kind of America, America and, and in Europe, uh, there is the, the Google and the Bing. But for example, uh, Turkey or China, they use uh, different tools. Uh, like uh, there's Yandex and there's Baidu. If, if that's your, your target area, then also make sure that your uh, website evaluates uh, good in their uh, crawlers. Um, so the, the the search engine console gives you good feedback about uh, potential issues and, and break, broken links on on your uh, catalog and website. And GeoNetwork itself has a couple of tools. Uh, it has a link checker. It has a uh, abstract uh, and, and and title length checkers. So that helps you to to create uh, good metadata. Um, yeah, this is one of such tools uh, that one indicates how much pages are, are uh, included in the index uh, of the search engine. Um, same here, uh, this, this one, this is a graphic of uh, how much uh, people use a certain uh, uh, keyword and click a link to, to any of uh, your pages. Um, there's a, a robots.txt uh, uh, 
uh, file that uh, technology uh, that uh, this is where you typically advertise where your sitemap is located make sure that that one is on the root of your website that's where the the search engine expects it but also consider that that uh, you can disallow irrelevant content there and um, this is interesting because then in that scenario you can uh, prevent uh, ordinary users to arrive in, in some very technical API like a CSW capabilities or whatever um, and uh, only make the, make sure that they arrive at the, the proper HTML pages. Um, there's a Google dataset search these days, uh, two years ago. Um, and uh, so, so Google, besides crawling the full internet, also crawls within the metadata to find uh, special uh, uh, tags that indicate that it's a data set. And uh, GeoNetwork has that uh, property also. So um, the, the, the Google, via the schema.org uh, tagging, is able to identify that, that he arrived at a page describing a data set. This is how this arrives in the uh, in this search option. So that uses the schema.org uh, dataset ontology. Schema.org is an ontology uh, which is a, a initiative from uh, all the search engines together. So it's it's not a Google initiative. So they they uh, created this this schema uh, the the ontology um, uh, between them. So Yandex has a validator for that. And Bing has a validator for that. It's interesting to to check all of these uh, validators. So in GeoNetwork, we uh, introduce a, a, a small script, uh, LDJSON uh, script that has the same record as is displayed in HTML, uh, also as JSON-LD. Uh, and also here, use tools. So for example, th this is actually a deprecated tool, but uh, it, it was very good. Uh, these days, the tool is called, uh, called Rich Snippets. Uh, but uh, it gives a similar experience. On one side, you see the HTML page that was created by GeoNetwork, and on the other side, you find uh, what the, the search engine was able to extract from it, and if it has warnings or errors. And the same one for Yandex. Uh, it's a bit more basic, but it gives similar uh, results. Is this for you, uh, Joe? I think it is. Yeah. So, um, so uh, as part of a, a project uh, with the Scottish government um, last year and the year before, we we took the recommendations from the Geospatial Commission Best Practices Guide that we talked about earlier, and we implemented these structured data tags that that Paul's been talking about in the UK Gemini 2.3 metadata profile. Um, so, and and this is this is since then has kind of been formalised into a a proper mapping between uh, Gemini 2.3 and Schema.org. So it's it's um it's been kind of formally adopted, which is which is nice. But that means that we've got as many as of the tags as we possibly can that are that are in the records. Um, all the license constraints are, are now properly properly show up as as uh, structured data. Um, Next slide, please. So, um, to, as part of this work, we, we we found a few kind of issues that that caused problems um, uh, that, that that sort of really downgrade records uh, search results. Um, and the first, which is kind of important in in multi-tenanted catalogs for, for that hold metadata for a lot of different organisations, is that duplicated titles for records um, become duplicated um, web pages as far as Google's concerned. So for example, you might have um, seven or eight different, um, let's say, um, protected trees data sets, all called protected trees, uh, but they're all from different organizations. But as far as Google's concerned, they're they're all the same, and it's it's trying to you're you're trying to game the uh, the search res results. Um, so yeah, you got to be careful about broken links because uh, within your records, because they can't be um, indexed, and the search engines don't don't really like that. It looks bad, um, and things like titles and abstracts, if they're too short or too long then they don't look good in search results. 
Um, so, um, so, so basically, it, it also in your abstracts, if you can create nice full sentences, then again, that looks a lot better in in search results, and um, you know, uh, it makes it also makes it easier for people to understand the data set. Next slide, please. Um, so we've been working on um, some fixes, as I say, to, to kind of make these things easier for for users of the catalog to to, to sort out. Um, uh, and, and really that's so that we can actually produce reports to go back to the organizations and and um, and, and tell them that there are problems. So um, checks on things like titles and abstract lengths and, and, and broken links. Um, so um, we have we, we use an additional uh, tool alongside Geo Network called uh, Apache Zeppelin, which allows us to create interactive dashboards effectively from um, from the the database that sits behind Geo Network, um, and and we can use that uh, to to produce dashboards with downloadable re reports for the for the the catalog admin and, and catalog users. So we've got all sorts of queries in there to check for things, to, for basically to to help people check that their record's going to look okay when it's published. Next slide, please. And here's a, a couple of examples of um, of what these of what these look like um, uh, for the for the catalog admins. Uh, next slide, please. So I think I'm handing back over to you now, Paul. Yes. So yeah, we already talked about uh, this a bit, but in in, in G Network is uh, the technology currently used. Um, uh, has a bit of a challenge with uh, the search engine. Um, it's a single page application. Uh, it puts actually a lot of content with Ajax uh, 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 in the main screen and the search engine doesn't seem to like it. So, so there were really problems of, of getting indexed by the, by the search engines. Um, that's why uh, at some point we uh, added the functionality of providing a pre-rendered web page for each metadata record in the catalog and via the sitemap XML uh, notify the search engine of, of the existence of those uh, pages. And that, that really helped. And uh, these days, uh, 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 the metadata records in GeoNetwork are, are found quite quite well in the search engine. Um, OGC API records um, is, is actually a bit of a next step uh, for us in this direction. Um, OGC API is, is from the, you, you probably heard about OGC API features and, and, and tiles and, and the maps these days. Um, records is, is another leaf on that uh, other new branch of the OGC. Um, and it, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's currently kind of an alternative to the traditional CSW catalog service for the web, um, but then uh, with the modern API uh, feel. Um, so the draft specification is is uh, is really is available and it's really uh, detailed, so you can already implement it. Uh, actually, uh, within the GeoNetwork project, we have a, a module that you can install on top of GeoNetwork, uh, which provides that interface. Um, follows the, the OGC API common specification. So you have content negotiation for each record providing HTML or the JSON encoding or the XML encoding of the, of the page. And uh, it uses the typical uh, open API verbs, uh, REST uh, error codes. And uh, this API is uh, due to its REST RESTful nature is, is also fully crawlable by, by the search engine. Every record has its unique uh, URL. And uh, so, so this is going to replace the, the traditional uh, pre-rendered uh, content uh, that, that we had uh, with now being an alternative interface to, to GeoNetwork. Well, then, then, then uh, oh, there's a typo there. Um, 
kind of a uh, interesting question uh, we may we may discuss during this conference do we still need catalogs um, the ogc api common uh, follows the best practices uh, for data on the web uh, search engines will crawl the collection uh, info from from the ogc api features as yeah, so the, the previous wfs and uh, search engines will directly uh, crawl the ogc api features being aware that that a certain data set is published with the metadata that is registered in the in the context of the the ogc api features um does why and we we can then just uh, ask google to, to find any data set on the web so there's in theory no need for a catalog but of course as a catalog person uh, um, i've been thinking a lot <laughs> about that and and uh, um there's a, there's a couple of aspects that I want to bring in already, but we can continue the discussion afterwards in the chat. Um, so uh, a, a dedicated catalog for an organization somehow provides an authoritative search experience for dedicated user groups. So, so some people uh, will not generally believe uh, the, the, the Google search result and really want to go to the organizational website to, to make a, an authoritative search against uh, data sets of that organization. Thanks, Paul. Uh, we're running up at time, and it's a hard cutoff. Do you, um, do you guys have any final wrap up before questions? This looks like a good place to stop, really. Yeah, really, yeah. I'm, I'm preparing the discussion already, Jody. So uh, <laughs> let's go. Right. Well, thank you both very much for speaking at Phosphor G. Um, so far, we just have two questions. And the first one, I confess, is mine. Do your headsets actually match? <laughs> it would appear so, yes. Well, that, that's, that's good. And the next question <laughs> is, is it possible to harvest metadata from OGC API instead of CSW? Yes, yeah, so not yet. So, so we're working. We're working on that. That that should be uh, available soon. Currently, it's it's not supported yet. Okay. Well, thank you guys very much for uh, an insightful and interesting talk. Um, yeah. So are there any Here's another questions? discussion topic, Jody, to, to yeah. give some firewood for the discussion. You're, you're asking your own question. Go ahead. Yes. So we're very ISO 1139 oriented, but it doesn't really fit with this whole new OGC API kind of thing. And I'm really interested to um, discuss with you what, what do you think uh, of the, is the future of ISO 1139 and, and 115. And there's actually a group within the OGC who, who has that as a topic. So these days there is Stack and uh, there is uh, uh, DCAD. Um, uh, it could be, yeah, to me, it makes sense if, if any new version of ISO 19115 would be, uh, uh, would use any of these other initiatives as a starting point. So start with DCAD or schema.org and then add a special topics of, uh, of, of, of geo on top of this uh, schema. Right, yeah, I get there. A couple more questions have come in. Um, so I, Paul, can you provide a list of tools for checking metadata records? You brought up a couple screen stamps and people are asking if there's a list of tools. Okay. Um... So some of the things exist in Geo Network directly, don't they? Um, so uh, if you log into Geo Network as a as an administrator, you have there's there's a, a, a report for checking links within records. Um, the other the other screenshots that we put were were kind of built on the back end database. Um, so Geo Network it stores its metadata and, and all of its other data that it requires, which is you know stuff about users and 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 stuff about the the records the, as they are in the catalog rather than the the metadata. Uh, it stores those in a database, and if that's something like Postgres, then you can um, then you can query that, and you can you you can create queries as you would any other Postgres data. So that's that's the approach that we take. And we like um, Apache Zeppelin because it allows us to, to, to kind of build these queries and um, 
you, you effectively provides the, the catalogue administrators with some access to the database without necessarily giving them access to the database and allowing them to break things. So you can have a nice read-only user that, that, that can query the database and, and, and make, make their own queries, but not necessarily um, break so things. Sure. I've got two more questions here. Uh, one is, is there a roadmap implementation for SDMX? You've got 20 seconds to answer. SDMX is, is currently not on the roadmap. Uh, to me, I actually doubt if, as, uh, similar to ISO 1139, if SDMX is the future, maybe we should look more at StatDCAT. And uh, I think StatDCAT would be much more uh, easy to implement. And the very last question, which is the most popular, GeoNetwork is not capable of using JDK 11, so I can't use it with Debian 10. I'm oh, can you answer that, that Jody? <laughs> I will. I did the research during the Bolsena Code Sprint. Please join me at the Phosphor G Code Sprint this weekend, and we'll make it happen. Um, OK, and last question. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of time. Uh, please hunt down. Uh, Paul and Joe, and if you've got any remaining questions, catch them in the chat or on the conference floor. Thank you guys very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you all.